The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Monday morning. We got a big week of earnings ahead of us for technology stocks out there. We kick it off today with Facebook. We get Amazon out there. We get Microsoft out there, uh, to name a couple. You got Alphabet out there as well. We got Apple. We'll go over them all. Right now, you're kicking off the week in positive territory with the S&Ps right now, right near record territory. You're positive by seven points. All-time record print on the S&Ps early Friday morning, 45 51. We're about eight points away from that price level right now, 45.43. Tech stocks higher as well. We get the NASDAQ 100 up 45 points right now, 15,386. We got Tesla trading to record territory right now on Hertz, ordering 100,000 vehicles for $4.2 billion. We'll go over that in a moment. Remarkable. Dow up 25 points, 35,582. And you get the Russell positive by two at 2291. Bitcoin. Catching a bid up almost two thousand dollars at sixty two thousand eight hundred and eighty crude. How about an eighty five dollar handle? It doesn't stop in crude, man. You got some volatility in both directions. But check out this crude contract. A one way shot really from August, a one way shot back from November. This thing we've had pullbacks, man. But look at this run we've had just since August 23rd. Crude is up twenty three dollars from that price point on August 23rd. You're only talking about two months, folks. $85 for the price of crude right now. Gold is up 17 bucks, excuse me, seven bucks at 18.04. There's your volatility on Friday on gold. Uh, yes, Friday on gold, we claw back some of that decline. Gold trading at 18.04. We got silver up about three pennies right now at 24.29. We jump to notes and bonds. The 10 year right now, negative one tick, so you're barely moved on the 10 year. You're talking about a yield right now of 1.67%. The yield on the 10 year, the third year is negative 13 ticks at 157.28. And we jump over to the volatility index as we come into a potentially volatile week. We're trading at 1581 right now. And I mentioned it why not before we get into the tesla story which is awesome in many ways uh in terms of how that breaks out right now where we are going down the line here you're talking about earnings this week when you're talking about where we are facebook is tonight we'll go over that in a moment uh there's a lot of companies out there in a big way the big name numbers you're talking about facebook tonight we got microsoft and google tomorrow alphabet as they like to be known uh on wednesday let's see we got mcdonald's out there coca-cola on wednesday align technology ebay and then thursday how about amazon and apple so you got Tuesday, you're going to get Google and Microsoft. And on Thursday, you're going to get Amazon and Apple, along with you got a bunch of other companies sprinkled in there. Let's jump over to Tesla. Watch out, folks. TSLA, $949. There's your acceleration, up by about 40 bucks. If you get an order for a $4.2 billion purchase over the weekend, your stock may go up. If that purchase represents one-tenth of your production for the entire year, that may cause your stock price to go up as well. Let's jump over to the article, and there it is. Hertz orders 100,000 Teslas in rental market shakeup. I was talking to my dad this morning. Uh, smart move, right, if you can afford it. $4.2 billion in revenue for Tesla. That's why you're seeing Tesla accelerate higher. Now, these cars are going to be delivered, I think it said, over about the next 16 months. Let's slide down here and see where we're talking about. Um Come on. I believe it's about the next 16 months that they'll be delivered. I'll pull this up and get it exactly. It is in here. Hold on one second. There you go. 14 months. So the cars are going to be delivered over the next 14 months. Now, what's so amazing here is that they almost corner the market. And that's what Bloomberg points out initially. By purchasing one-tenth of Tesla's entire production for the year, by locking up so much of their production, the order is equivalent to about one-tenth of what the automaker can currently produce in a whole year. Hertz may box out rivals from copying, copycatting the strategy. Uh, I'm sure Tesla would like to accommodate some of their rivals if possible. But it's difficult when you purchase 100,000 cars from the um, car maker. 
Breaking with tradition, they're going to be paying full price for well-appointed cars rather than the, the typical base model. I mean, they're going high end. Hertz is probably the highest end of the rental market. Uh, they were just in bankruptcy. Quite a turnaround they had going on there. Uh, just reading down. Yes, along with the rollout, Hertz, uh, they're going to revamp digitization. They're going to electrify their whole fleet eventually, which is about 500,000 vehicles. Yeah, 17 months after they were going BK, they had, as of June 30th, almost $2 billion in cash and a debt-to-equity ratio of 2.4 from almost 10. Quite a turnaround. And uh, the, the company that won the bid, so uh, Carteris, Suteris, I'm not sure, Knighthead, a distressed debt fund, hedge fund, and Suteris, a private equity firm specializing in travel, won the bankruptcy option for Hertz in May with a $6 billion bid. The company already has a market value of $11.6 billion. It trades OTC right now ahead of its relisting on the NASDAQ stock market, and their symbol right now, OTZ, is HTZZ. On them, uh, there is the action 24 469, but OTC, not sure how that actually uh, plays out. Right now, you get a bid ask about $2 higher. Really remarkable to see how that plays out when you talk about 100,000 vehicles, $4.2 billion, and one tenth of the entire production of the entire car company, Tesla, is going to Hertz. And they're going to have those cars starting next month as they just basically are probably taking them over the next 14 months. I mean, think about it. That's almost uh, eight, 9,000 cars every single month for over a year that they're going to be dropping on the Hertz parking lot. It's pretty cool. I said to my dad, he's never driven a Tesla. I've never driven a Tesla. If you're going to go out there and rent a vehicle and you have the option, I mean, imagine in a few years if Hertz just has a completely electrified rental fleet, you don't have to pay for gas, and you're using pretty cool top-of-the-end Teslas, uh, that's that's a competitive advantage in my mind in a big way. Hertz making use of uh, the cash that they have from that influx. Remarkable in a big way. We'll see how that plays out. Nonetheless, you're going to have Tesla open at all-time highs. You're pushing a trillion-dollar market capitalization now. We came into Friday at $950 billion. You're talking about, what's that, a billion shares? Yeah, you're talking about a billion shares, essentially, outstanding. Uh, and so you got to get to uh, almost about a thousand bucks. You're going to be pushing a thousand bucks very soon, as in a trillion dollar market cap. Remarkable Tesla is going to push a trillion dollars. Do you remember the conversations going back not that long ago, folks? Remember the conversations about who was going to be the first trillion dollar company? Well, now we got Apple far above two trillion. We have Amazon up there. You have Google up there. Um, Microsoft is probably up there as well, but remarkable that you're going to have Tesla up there when just that many years ago, I'll pull up the date because I'm interested in myself right now. The world had never seen a trillion dollar company, folks, outside of uh, some years back. And uh, Tesla looking to join that club right now in a big way as they open at about 950 bucks. Jumping back to the market, we get the S&Ps right near all-time highs right now. You're trading at 4544. Uh, jumping around to some of the other FANG stocks before we get into the program, just to see how they're trading this morning. Amazon, quite a pullback on Friday. They're out with their numbers on Thursday. You're trading basically flat this morning. You got Microsoft shares basically flat as well at 309. Google shares right now trading at 2767. We're going to get into Facebook when we come back after the break. Facebook with their earnings tonight, they're down about $2. Uh, it's just a constant feed of bad news for Facebook. We'll see if they can turn it around tonight. Their earnings will be right back, folks. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of Facebook up here. Facebook down almost $3 in the pre-market. Like I said, as we went into the break, it almost does not stop uh, in terms of Facebook with the constant, constant flow of bad news recently. Uh, interesting chart up here. So rising internal concerns about young users was largely, largely invisible to outsiders, forming the basis for a whistleblower's SEC complaint up here. So take a look at this. Uh, now, you have an obligation as a public company to disclose material facts that may affect your company. Now, where that line is drawn, right, that'll be up for interpretation. But it's pretty startling facts in here when we all understand that the future is the youth, okay? And Facebook's not going to be able to operate a company for decades into the future if they're only encompassing 30, 40, and 50-year-olds. The future is people younger than that, especially when you talk about people that live their lives online. That may change in the future, as in 40-year-olds may be more inclined or 50-year-olds may be more inclined to be online than the average 40-year-old or 50-year-old right now, as technology is more adopted. But take a look at this. So in March, a group of researchers inside Facebook compiled a report from one of the company's most powerful executives, Chief Product Officer Chris Cox. The paper included a series of charts with data highlighting a troubling trend that seemed to be accelerating. Facebook was losing popularity with teens and young adults. The pink line here is 13 to 17 year olds. Whether you're talking about used content production rate, down. Time spent daily, active user, down dramatically. Message sends, down dramatically. All right, you compare that to you have yellow 18 to 29, slight decreases, and 30 plus year olds are actually where they're increasing it. Folks, that's not going to be a long term growth scenario for Facebook in the social media space. One colorful graphic, as they tell, they're talking about this graphic here. Time spent for U.S. teenagers on Facebook down 16%. That's a 16% drop, that line right there. And that young adults in the U.S. were also spending 5% last time. I think they're talking about right here, the yellow line that dropped off. The number of new teens signing up was declining. And perhaps most concerning was a series of slides showing that young people were taking much longer to join Facebook than they had in the past. Most people born before 2000 had created a Facebook account by 19 or 20. Now, Facebook wasn't expecting people born later to join the social network until they were much older, perhaps 24 or 25. If people aren't adopting Facebook by the time they're 25 years old, you could just miss it entirely. 
right? Think about the number of opportunities and the number of competition they have going on right now, whether it's Snapchat that dove last week because their earnings were in trouble. Excuse me, uh, let alone TikTok, the world global sensation. The report is among hundreds of internal documents collected by the former Facebook employee turned whistleblower, Frances Hagen, I believe, Hagen, uh, who went public in early October. I think she was on 60 Minutes, right? She was on um, documents disclosed to the SEC, provided to Congress in redacted form by their legal counsel. Redacted versions were obtained uh, from some news organizations, including Bloomberg. Taken together, the documents paint a stark, stark picture of the years-long decline in growth metrics for key user groups like teens, young adults in the U.S. and um, on flagship Facebook app. Internal reports, some of which haven't previously been reported, show spending less time, fewer teens signing up, new teen accounts are duplicates rather than unique users. That's a big one, fake accounts. Users across age groups are creating fewer posts, less engagement. Uh, despite detailed research, employees don't fully understand why these trends are happening or why product changes have failed to reverse them. Facebook is not good. <laughs> that's, that's why I would say it. I tell people, listen, it's great how it was invented, right? To kind of stay close to family. It is a cesspool right now, folks. You know, we have a Facebook account for TFNN. Um, and so as a result of that, I keep a personal Facebook page. It is kind of nice to be able to check in with people, whether it's your high school acquaintances and like not. But I tell people all the time, people on Facebook, you go to Facebook almost to vent. It's a space that's become like a cork board for venting. People don't normally pull up Facebook and people do. And kudos to them. And there's a lot of brilliant, positive people, some of which I'm friends with and I appreciate their posts. It's all about positivity. OK, but very few people just go on Facebook to say it's a lovely day. I'm enjoying my coffee in the morning. Right. They go on there to gripe. They go on there to vent. Uh, it's it, it creates a lot of negativity in a lot of ways. And so I, it's not surprising any of it when they say that they don't understand why this is happening. It's not enjoyable. It's that simple. It's not enjoyable. And you have a lot of competition that people, especially younger, are enjoying more so. Uh, while Facebook has spent years studying its declining popularity among young people and erosion that threatens the company's advertising business, which has conquered an estimated 23.7 of global digital ad market. Uh, they've been markedly less forthcoming about those concerns in public. The tremendous business, business success has max, masked the persistent issues with young people. You're going to see that catch up, though. And that's what they're talking about in terms of material disclosures, that that should have been disclosed. Whistleblower using that as one of the reasons why they had to come forward. Uh, Facebook approaching a trillion dollar market cap. Now, we tie that all into earnings. All right, let's jump over. We got Snapchat. Talking about falling out of bed on Thursday with their numbers, really disappointed in a big way. Now, Facebook had come out and said already that the Apple privacy changes are going to affect them. Nonetheless, you saw a drop off in dramatic fashion from above 340 down to 315. We're going to open today at about 321. We'll take a look at the longer term chart on Facebook. You see where we are right now. From the run we had in March up to the highs of 384, we're right at the 50% line of about 319. Uh, if you're looking for the 608, that's about 304. We had a little bit of chop area back, whether it was from April to June in that area of 304. Now, Facebook, they're out with their numbers uh, after the bell tonight. And Facebook right now for the week, okay, now these numbers are all going to recalibrate on the open. We'll check it back out on the open when they do. But Facebook for the week, you're talking about a $21 move is priced in for those numbers. Um, just reading it, they're talking about Facebook and then Dan. And yeah, Dan, you know, kudos to you. If you use Facebook and you're saying, you know, you're talking about businesses, um, click the back button. I agree. It's just... Uh, you know, time is valuable, folks. Use that time wisely. Spending a lot of it on Facebook is not conducive to happiness. I'll put it that way. Uh, $21 move. They'll be looking for their numbers after the bell tonight. About an $18 move of that just for the earnings event. $21 if you want exposure throughout the entire week. We'll see how that jumps around on the open, though, um, with more negative news coming down the line on Facebook. And it just does not stop, folks. And the one thing, so Snapchat, what they talked about, they talked about the privacy deal. Right. That they're not able to target the privacy is hitting them. There's your drop off on Snapchat. But which, what they also talked about was that just generally companies are having supply chain problems. And as a result, they don't have the supply they need to ramp up advertising to the degree that they might coming into a holiday season. Now, I'll tell you a story. I ran by Starbucks last night at about four or five o'clock. 
And Starbucks that I went to, now this happens occasionally, but they were out of sleeves. They're out of sleeves. They're, they're the biggest coffee company in the world doesn't have coffee sleeves um, for their coffee cups when they're serving hot coffee. And I was saying to the people I was with, I was saying, can you imagine the type of delays they're dealing with if a company like Starbucks wasn't able to stock up on something as simple as a little cardboard sleeve? They could have a million of those somewhere. They never go bad, right? That means that there are severe delays in the supply chain for something like that, for a company like Starbucks that obviously has some of the best um, you know, supply management that you could have, you'd think they would at least for the size of the company they are, they don't have coffee sleeves. So we'll see if Facebook gets hit even harder than the market might be looking for because they've been pricing in those privacy chains, but are they pricing in companies dealing with supply chain shortages, increasing or decreasing, I should say, their advertising revenue? Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back from the market open. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got the S&Ps up about nine points to start the week, trading at 90, 95, 45, 45 with NASDAQ 100 up about 53 right now. Dow up about 43. We jumped to crude, $84.95, quite a price tag for crude. Gold up $9 at 18.05 right now. And we jump over to the volatility index. Not a bad VIX right now, under 16, 15.77. Think about it, under the historical average. Think about everything going on. 
And the VIX is under the historical average as we come into Facebook earnings, right? We come into Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Apple earnings this week. We have the COVID pandemic persisting in terms of at least jobs, not quite there. Uh, we'll see where we go. It's remarkable. We're already at the end of October, folks. We're going to be getting non-farm payroll. I think it's next Friday, right? November 5th. We're at it again. There's going to be high expectations there. It's remarkable. We had all those earnings coming in. Earnings season has been doing well in a big way, and it continues tonight as we kick it off with Facebook. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on. How about Pinterest? Seems like PayPal is not in the market to buy Pinterest after all. PayPal sent an update on its website, not pursuing an acquisition of Pinterest at, that, at this time. Pinterest soared last week after Bloomberg first reported that PayPal may acquire the social media company. Uh, on that news, you had PayPal spiking lower. You had Pinterest spiking higher. That has been reversed a little bit today. You jump over to Pinterest first. Uh, Pinterest. There you were before that report, and remarkable that you almost gave it all back. Look at that, right? The report comes out Wednesday. You spike to 66. You end the week almost near 56 again, and somehow we're going to open. I mean, that's got to be frustrating, right? If you're in Pinterest last week before the news, you're sitting at 56, and somehow they break the story and then take the story away, and you come out of that down $6 at 50. Nonetheless, PayPal, though, some big movement there. Uh, similar story, both stocks below where you were trading at last week before that news story. Um, PayPal had two big down days, Wednesday, then Thursday. Uh, today you get a pop, but not quite that big of a pop. You're only at 252 and you were at 273 before that started coming out last week for PayPal, nonetheless up 5.2% on their numbers. Let's jump over to Facebook and see how they're trading right now. We jump over to the Analyze tab. Facebook, about a $21 move. Uh, same as kind of where we were looking at previous for their earnings for the week. $19.86 of that weekly implied volatility uh, for the move just tonight. Let's jump over to Tesla, see how they're doing. Are we going to 100? Are we going to 1,000? Are we going to 1,000? 956, not quite. Uh, but you do pop on the open. 956, what are we talking about for a market cap now for this company as you approach $1 trillion? $958 billion market cap for Tesla. Remarkable. All right, what else we have going on? We got Burger King parent company, Restaurant Brands International. They're out with their numbers. You were higher pre-market to 63.50. You're down to 60.93 right now. You jump over to their numbers. Burger King parent earnings beat, but labor challenges weigh on sales. I mean, we could almost write that uh, headline for any company, right? Earnings beat, but labor challenges weigh on sales. Restaurant Brands International topped estimates for earnings, but fell short on revenue. That's not what you like to see. I like to see uh, the opposite of that. I want to see companies beating on earnings if you have to and missing on maybe, excuse me, I want, I want to see companies beating on revenue. Uh, and I want to see them beating on earnings, too. But if they beat on earnings and miss on revenue, all they're doing is downsizing that company and cutting costs. Earnings, 76 cents versus 74. The revenue was a slight miss of 1.5 billion versus 1.52. Reported fiscal third quarter net income attributable, attributable to common shareholders, 221 million or 70 cents a share up from 145 million. Net sales rose 11.8%, but short of the expectations you have tim hortons in there as well same store sales growth 8.9 percent market was looking for 10.3 that's a miss as well burger king same store sales 7.9 percent after dropping seven percent a year ago uh market was looking for 8.6 u.s same store sales shrank by 1.6 percent sales in the company's home market have been trailing those of other burger chains, including McDonald's. Uh, Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen, also a brand underneath that umbrella, saw its same store sales fall by 2.4% in there. The fried chicken chain was facing tough comparisons with its performance a year ago when same store sales climbed 17.4%. Yeah, um, that was not a lot of good news that I just listed off there in terms of misses on same store sales. You're down right now 2.9% for Restaurant Brands International. Jumping down the line, what else we have going on? So we talked about Pinterest and PayPal. We talked about Tesla. Can't talk to them, talk about them enough. Uh, Kimberly Clark, the products uh, consumer products company, a little bit lower pre-market. Let's see how they do in the open. Revenue slightly above forecast. Earnings three cents a share um, below estimates of a buck sixty-two. So they miss on earnings and they do beat a little bit on revenue. Higher inflation and supply chain issues. Any company that misses, folks, they're going to say that whether it's true or not. Kimberly Clark down about five percent. Uh, in the open. Facebook we talked about as well. Let's see what else we have going on. Whirlpool got a downgrade. 
Uh, yeah, Pfizer, BioNTech, that news I feel like was almost kind of out there on Friday as well. All right, let's jump around to some of the crypto action we got going on. So you got Bitcoin right now trading up $2,290. We got a couple Bitcoin ETFs out there. Bitto up 3.8%. That was the ProShares one that launched first. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, last week. Now, good old Elon Musk, as if he's not a, got enough going on today with a $4.2 billion sale over the weekend to Hertz. Uh, so this is Shiba Inu. Now, it's interesting how it started, how it's going. is kind of how the meme goes. How it started, Shiba Inu up 50% to record, becomes the 11th biggest crypto coin. Uh, they're looking for Robinhood to list it. Uh, gained more than, I had to wrap my head around this one, 40 million percent in the past year. I'm not sure I've, I've now, percentages, remember folks, uh, incorporate decimal points, zeros. They get a little bit confusing. Uh, 40 million percent, that is quite a percentage on a yearly basis, up 50% in the last 24 hours. But guess what? Good old Elon tweets out that he doesn't have any Shiba Inu. And the, and, the, and the crypto drops 15%. So the, the two time prints on this was, this was yesterday morning, Sunday morning, coming in at about 8.40 in the morning. Uh, looks like it got updated a little bit later yesterday afternoon. And then they got, they got one out last night, and that's probably because good old Elon was out there yesterday afternoon at 2 o'clock. He says, out of curiosity, I acquired some, um, and I believe that's, pro oops, well, let's just see. I believe that's just, Tech, uh, the, the official name for Bitcoin, Ethereum, Doge, some ASCII hash strings called Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Doge. That's it. Those are the only ones he's got, folks. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Doge. Excuse me. If you want uh, to get on the Elon crypto train, looks like those are the three stops that you got. And that's it. As I've said before, don't bet the farm on crypto. True value is building products and providing services to your fellow human beings, not money in any form. Good old Elon preaching preaching to uh, his followers out there. Nonetheless, buyer beware, Shiba Inu. Not familiar, but check out Shiba Inu's performance. Now, this is just uh, the run it had yesterday. Let's expand that a little bit. I mean, you're dealing with you know, 0 0.000035, some of these cryptos. Watch out. Percentages are amazing, but these things cost fractions of fractions of fractions of pennies. Uh, but you see the run that they have, and that's why people love that volatility sometimes. That was founded in 2020 by an anonymous person going by the name Ryoshi, decentralized meme token that evolved into a vibrant ecosystem. It appears to have been made in the vein of Dogecoin. Yeah, Shibo Ino, Dogecoin, why not? Remarkable. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got the market pulling back a bit. There's a little bit of a sell-off. S&P's flat. NASDAQ in the green. Dow digging by 18. I'll be back, folks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets churning a little bit negative right now. S&Ps, you're talking about giving up a quick 18 points to the downside. You're negative by five points right now. NASDAQ turning to flat. We got the Dow negative 28 points right now. 35,530. Russell holding on to two points of gains. Bitcoin holding on to $2,000 of gains at 63,000. We got crude. 8486 gold contract holding steady up about 10 bucks 1807 gold with a little bit of a bid in it and the 10 year right now we're getting some higher price and lower yield did you say ho lower yield 1.63 percent so much for 1.67 1.63 the yield on that 10 year right now and as we get a little bit of a turn in the market we got a vix back above 16 at 16 13. All right, let's jump around to some of the companies that we got earnings outside of the big tech stock. So as I said again, let's check them out as we go down the line. We got Facebook after the bell tonight. Tomorrow, the two headline numbers are going to be Microsoft. Ooh, watch out for Microsoft. A little bit of a drop here. Microsoft out with their numbers tomorrow and Google. The other big headline number out tomorrow, Google down 1.1%. Watch out for Google, man. Uh, Facebook, how are we doing? Facebook actually flat right now. Twitter shares just jumping around down 2.2%. Now, Twitter is out with their numbers pull it up pull it up on tuesday twitter's out with their numbers on tuesday interesting right we got facebook today we get twitter tomorrow we get snapchat last week the social co media companies all coming as a group uh and as i said so microsoft and google on tuesday and then the next headline numbers are you going to get amazon and apple on thursday amazon trading down about half a percent right now apple shares down about two tenths percent right now outside of those headline numbers jumping around to other companies and there's a bunch of big ones uh ups is going to be out with their numbers on tuesday I was chatting with my dad earlier today, even taking a look at UPS, taking a look at UPS versus FedEx. UPS has quite a run recently. Look at this run, man. From October 5th at 177, you're continuing that gain at 204. You got a gap here from its last earnings event in July. The high of that gap is about, excuse me, the low of that gap is about 209. You're trading at 204 this morning. That's Tuesday. They'll be out with their numbers. General Electric, they're out with their numbers on Tuesday as well. Look at that consolidation. You got $10 range. Let's just see out of curiosity, because um, talk about a low volatility move here. What kind of volatility you're pricing into the move? You got about a $5 implied move on either direction for General Electric out with their numbers. Uh, and I believe it is, what did I just say? Tuesday? Yes, I did. Tuesday, just making sure. There it is, October 26th. They'll be out with their numbers. Man, $5. $5 in either direction would push it almost outside of a consolidation General Electric's been in since like March. You got a high end at about 107 and a low end at about 97 there for General Electric. You have gotten above or below it on a couple occasions. Um, so that's Tuesday. We also get Waste Management Tuesday. We got Hasbro. Let's jump over to Hasbro real quick. Hasbro, their last earnings event, jumps to 104. All the talk this year is that you better get your Christmas presents soon, folks, or they're going to be out. Uh, interesting to see what Hasbro is going to have to say about the holiday season coming down the line. You're down about 8 tenths percent on their numbers. Jumping over to the Analyze tab. 
taking a look at the move. Uh, uh, that's a decent move, about a $6 move priced into their earnings for the week. That's the implied volatility of the weeklies. Uh, it's about a 6 to 7% implied move for their numbers on Tuesday. We also get advanced micro devices, AMD. They'll be out with their numbers on Tuesday, AMD. You're talking about an $8 move implied, about $119 stock. This thing's been running to the moon. You're talking about challenging the highs we had back in August of 122. This morning, we're trading flat at 119. We have these on Tuesday, Texas Instruments as well. Uh, Wednesday, we got Boeing. Pulling up Boeing. Now, Boeing, this thing, watch out for this thing, man. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have been looking at Boeing on a couple occasions here, trying to maybe find a bid as this thing was just chopping around along the lower boundary line, and you're not chopping around anymore. Uh, you could make the case almost that you traded below it, came back, tested the line, and now you've traded lower again. The low, this is a weekly here. The low from the week of September 20th is 206. You're training 212 right now. Uh, and Boeing is out with their numbers on Wednesday. We got Coca-Cola out with their numbers on Wednesday as well. O'Reilly Automotive. Talk about a, a juggernaut, man. From 250 at the COVID lows to 665. This thing just does not stop. You're up two tenths percent today. So O'Reilly, they'll be out with their numbers after the bell. Yes, after the bell on Wednesday. Jumping over to O'Reilly. Um, okay, so they do not have weeklies in this. You're just dealing with monthly expiration. So if you want to go out, now sometimes, folks, you need liquidity when you're trading multi-leg option trades, if you are. Um, be careful here. If you only have monthly options, O'Reilly, some of them might not be as active, especially as you get out of the money in either direction. But that's a decent move, $38. But you got to keep in mind that that's the implied move for the whole month through November 19th. Uh, $40 move about for a $665 stock. This thing's been through the moon. This year, we started at about $460. we are trading about $660 right now for O'Reilly Automotive. Uh, what else we got? We got eBay on Wednesday, and then we'll shift to Thursday. So Thursday, we got Merck out with their numbers as well, MRK. Let's put it back just to a daily for the last year. Merck jumps higher on October 1st. That was the news that they came out with the antiviral drug, uh, one of the first drugs potentially for just management of COVID. You spike higher, you trade back and almost close that entire gap. We got to 77.11. The gap there was 76.65, and you've popped a bit. Now, Merck, you're looking at, uh, yeah, not that big of a move right now. Is that right? 221. Let's make sure the numbers are coming up for earnings. Yeah, October 28th, they got it listed. And this is where you really want to pay attention, folks. Not much volatility in this stock at all around earnings, right? Look at that. You jump over to the simulated trades for the weekly expiration. You're only talking about a $2.21 implied volatility move. Now, here's where my mind goes when you're looking to trade something like that. That's a nice setup if you're looking for a big move. The reason why there's a low implied volatility on this contract is because historically you probably don't get many big moves around earnings. So you got a $2.21 move. Uh, I'm not sure I would be selling premium on that equity when you only got a $2 move for an $80 stock. And you've had some big moves recently on Merck, let alone outside of earnings. And jumping down the line, what else we have on Thursday? Let's see, we got Altria Group, we got Western Digital, WDC, you got MasterCard, uh, Comcast out with their numbers. Comcast, let's jump over to them. CMCSA. This thing had been on quite a run. We give back some of those gains. Look at that run to 61.80. We're back at 53.82 right now. Jump to Comcast. We jump over, and you're talking about pretty low volatility as well. $2.10 move for a $53 stock. Comcast is out with their numbers on Thursday. We also get Caterpillar on Thursday as well. How are they going to do when you talk about rising prices? Uh, wage issues, supply chain issues. You got about a 5% move for Caterpillar with their numbers. A $10 move for a $200 stock. You take a look at the run, man, from 87 bucks to 246. But you're talking about now, we're five months removed from all time highs on Caterpillar up to 246.69. We also get Starbucks on Thursday as well. Starbucks. Somebody asked Starbucks where those coffee sleeves are. Uh, be interesting. I mean, if they're dealing with some supply chain issues, watch out, folks. This thing drives to 126. You're just off the highs at 113.55 right now. We jump over to the Analyze tab. Starbucks looking for about a $5.15 move this week. Uh, you're trading at a buck 13 and jumping over to the earnings. Yes, they will be out with their numbers on Thursday. Starbucks, along with Amazon and Apple. 
All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back to finish up the show. We got the S&Ps down two right now, right near all-time highs of 45.51. We're trading 45.34, and we got the VIX right now at 16.11. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the markets turning back to green right now. As the S&Ps are flat, you got the NASDAQ, Dow, and Russell all climbing back into green territory. Bitcoin continuing to, continuing to climb up 2100 bucks at 63230 You got crude up a buck 16 at 8491 Let's jump over to Tesla again. See how they're trading on the news of Hertz. 970 was the price we got. We're down to 948 You're still up 4.18%. Remarkable action on Tesla. Let's jump around to Facebook shares. They have their numbers coming out tonight. Facebook catching a little bit of a bid. Up about two tenths percent after jumping down to 320 on the open there. We jumped to Snapchat after last week's debacle. Snapchat down another seven tenths percent. We got Twitter with their earnings this week down 1.6 percent. Uh, continuing the slide that they have had recently. We jumped to some of the Fang stocks out with their numbers. See how they're trading. You have all the markets in the green right now, but Amazon down six tenths percent right now. Microsoft down six tenths percent right now. Apple down four tenths percent right now. Google down six tenths percent right now. Um, where's all the acceleration, folks, if the big dogs are trading a little bit lower, which is interesting to see there in a big way. Uh, all the markets in the green. 
All right, jumping around to what else, talk about pushing out paper. Allbirds, speaking of Facebook, this is where I've seen Allbirds. Talk about their advertisements. If you use social media, you've probably seen some of these ads. $2 billion valuation, not bad, selling uh, shoes, selling shoes. Uh, they're going to be pushing out 19.2 million shares, priced at between 12 and 14. They're going to be raising over a quarter billion dollars for Allbirds. It's really interesting how retail is changing here. Uh, this company started in 2005, I believe. Where are we at here? Yes, uh, excuse me, 2015. I meant 2015. Relied on the web to sell its wool sneakers, eco friendly wares. They look pretty cool. I've never bought one, but they do look pretty cool. Uh, they're losing a lot of money, though. <laughs> they are. Revenue for the quarter, 61 to 62 million. But you talk about losses here. Uh, losses mounted in the last quarter due to higher expenses. Book a net loss of 15 to 18 million for the three month period ended September 30th compared to a loss of 7 million. Now they're losing almost 20 million a quarter and they're only taking in 60 million a quarter. Um, but they're going to be pushing out paper to the tune of $2 billion. And they reference Warby Parker out there. I wouldn't put those two on the same comparison. Warby Parker's been around for a while. They have a lot of physical locations. All birds, they're just selling shoes online. Nonetheless, doing it well. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next. Live programming all Monday at TFNN. Have a great day, everybody.